you haven't had a chance, drive by 1732 West 40. That is the location of the new fire station. Almost completely done with the walls. It's where they're going to start setting across this road. So it's kind of exciting. During the height of summer temperatures, school is just around the corner. Hayes Fire Department Deputy Chief Shane Preston stops by to share some safety tips and some updates from the department on this episode of The Post Podcast. You know, we've been very fortunate this summer. It's been pretty mild. Uh, We've had good moisture coming through, not as much as we would like, obviously, but it's been enough. And, of course, you know, it seems to get the end of July then the heat always cranks on. So uh, just wanted to remind everybody, you know, while you're outdoors, drink plenty of water, get in the shade. Um, if you can, avoid the a- afternoons, get out early, and you know, if you got yard work, if you're doing it in the mornings. Um, I know this morning was pretty rough when I walked outside this morning, but it was still pretty warm. But um, if we can, you know, if everybody does that, you know, that should, should help everybody out. And just make sure you keep cool and uh, stay in that air conditioning. And with the storms, um, we, we, we all live in the plains. So, you know, Kansas, um, it seems like, you know, it's really hot. And then in the evenings, here comes the storm. So just be aware we've had, um, you know, the last couple of weeks, some storms roll through the, the areas, um, you know, like Great Bend and there and, the, and such with the big winds and the, and the hail that they had there. So just when you're out, driving, um, maybe turn off the the satellite radio or, you know, listen to the local news, um, especially looking at those clouds, you know, getting dark and everything, just so you know what's coming and and maybe you can be a little more prepared and be safer. So uh, the other thing, it's probably not the most fun topic for kids, (laughs) but parents love it. Uh, summer break's almost over, and we are looking to go back to school. So I'm excited as a parent. I don't think my kids are, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just remember that uh, you'll start seeing um, city workers out painting crosswalks and you know getting those lanes for schools and such um, done. And so it's just good time to start remembering. Hey, there's there's going to be kids going and, and getting in that kind of thought a little bit and when you're driving out especially in the early mornings because those kids will be riding bicycles and such to, to their schools and, or walking and so uh, just be ready for that um and just remember you know if you got a cell phone just put it down you know just just avoid using those in the school zones and just just be alert because you never know if those little kids are just going to dart out or you know just not even look you know and just run so mm-hmm. And this year, you know, there's some additional concerns, I think, as we're going back. We've got a couple of traffic areas that are different now. That requires uh, probably a little bit more yeah, focus so, so you get used to it. If, um, most people, you know, if they go to the ECC area or the high school, um, they use a lot of the 27th and Canterbury um, route. Um, that's changed now. we got a roundabout there. And if you haven't been through it, uh, I encourage you to do it. I like it. It does seem to flow a little bit easier. You don't have to make a stop. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's. I think it's for school. It's going to be very beneficial in that area. And of course, then they changed Canterbury. You know, from four lanes um, to three lanes. So now there's an actual turning lane. Um, and with the idea behind that, we've having some rear end accidents in those areas. You know, people are wanting to like, you know, if they're heading south and want to turn into the hospital, somebody wouldn't see them because the sun was just right or something like that and would run into the back of them. So uh, hopefully that uh, reduces some of those injuries and such. So um, school bus safety, um, along with kids going walking and everything, there will be uh, school buses running through town and in the, in the county. Um, just remember, you know, make sure you talk with your kids about that if they're, if they're going to be doing the school bus. Don't let them stand on the curb. Make sure they're back you know, on the sidewalk, at least five steps. And, and then wait, make sure the bus, bus comes to a complete stop. So if they need to cross traffic um, to get to, you know, the school bus, uh, make sure the driver is 
come to a complete stop, doors open, stop signs out. And, you know, usually the driver will signal to the kids, hey, get on. So, um, and then uh, when you're, and, and also talk to your kids when they're on the bus, make sure that the bus driver's out. Just sit down. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you're, they're excited. They get to see their friends. They get to talk and, um, and they just, you know, they don't always sit down. So just make sure they do that. And then of course, always, you know, when the bus comes to a complete stop, that's the best time to, to get off and standing up and waiting for the bus to, to stop. So, uh, good advice. We've got to we we'll talk about some department stuff too, but any last thoughts on the safety tips before we move over? No, um, just saying that you know, just remember those because um, by the time we talk, ne- see each other next, um, school will be be in session. So, um, and then we'll probably talk a little bit more about that too. So, yeah, it never hurts to have a reminder no, when it, it comes to school safety or uh, traffic safety and little kids anyway. But yeah, let's talk about uh, you got some pretty cool stuff going on down at uh, the Hayes Fire Department. Yeah, so uh, we had some firefighters. They've completed some um, higher level training, and um, all these all the courses that the firefighters do are college based courses. So um, we had firefighter Aiden Stevenson. He completed uh, requirements for uh, Kansas EMT, so he is a state certified uh, emergency medical technician. That's a requirement that all of our firefighters have to have is EMT training. Uh, firefighter Talon Rice uh, completed his requirements for fire service instructor one and two. So uh, he's able to, basically what that means is he's able to teach a class and put together a class and, and facilitate that within the department. Um, firefighter Trevor Sherman, he, he attended a vehicle extra cra- vehicle extrication training course in Lawrence, Kansas. And with that, um, he picked up a few skills there and knowledge to bring back uh, some little more advanced training um, that we uh, can implement within the department. Um, And if you haven't had a chance, drive by uh, 1732 West 41st. And that is the location of the new fire station. Walls are going up. Uh, they're almost completely done with the walls uh, to where they're going to start setting the, the trusses for the roof. So it's kind of exciting. It's uh, you drive by and, and it's just a uh, cinder block building right now, but eventually that'll change. We'll, we'll have a brick veneer on there that that'll really look nice and tiny when you walk through. But um, it is coming along really well. So that's exciting. Do you have an idea right now when you guys are going to be able to start moving into that building? So projected time is, is May or June of 2024. So kind of depends once, you know, everything goes up, you know, the walls and roofs on, uh, you know, you start working on the inside then it kind of becomes, okay, can we get the right contract, you know, get the contractors lined up and going. And then, um, you know, when you get some other uh, materials in there now, What's the availability? Because we still run into that a little bit. Uh, I know talking to different contractors uh, doing projects here in town, you know, they still run into issues of, you know, and it seems like the simplest thing in the world, you know, and everybody should have that on the shelf, but it, it ends up just being back away for six months. So there could be some things in there that, you know, out of everybody's control that uh, could delay it just a little bit. But I don't foresee that right just moving so uh, we'll, we'll see yeah I'm excited excellent. yeah you'll have to keep us updated next time as well but uh shane we've got just about a minute or so okay. left always want to talk about this you've still got your smoke alarm program going yes, right we still do if if you own your home um and you have a you don't have any smoke alarms or maybe you're not sure how many you actually need um if you already have some and you're not just just not sure give us a call uh, we are more than happy to come out, um, help you locate those smoke detectors where they need to be, place them in the right area. And we do have the smoke detector program. It's a little bit of paperwork. takes like two minutes to fill out, um, and we'll put you these smoke detectors in your house. Um, and we do install. So we just don't drop them off. We actually put them up and, and do that too. So, And, you know, also on, on 
and CO too. So if you need help with that uh, for CO monitors and stuff, uh, see, see what we can do.